So we have today's lesson and then review on Thursday. Actually, yeah. Wait. Review on Thursday. And I think you guys actually will test Friday. It's a Monday, Friday. So, um, yeah, so you guys will test either Thursday or Friday, but your homework will be due Thursday. Everybody's homework is due Thursday because even if your test is until Friday. But, um, yeah, I think that's right because we're not going to do the review next period. We're going to do a multiplying polynomials activity since we had to leave class early because of the fire, not drill yesterday. Okay, so um, we are going to wrap up then, and the last thing we're talking about is special polynomial multiplication problems. So we're going to talk about some patterns that we can identify. But before we do that, I want to just wrap up with what we did yesterday because we had to end kind of quickly and not on the note that I wanted to. So for number 13, for example, do you have to use the box method? No, absolutely not. You're welcome to distribute just using arrows. But again, with number 13, if you don't use the box method for number four, I don't think you're likely any more likely to make a mistake because number four is a pretty simple distribution problem. But with number 13, how many multiplication problems are you actually going to end up having to do? Three. Six. Why is it six? Because you multiply the x by everything. You multiply the x times everything and the four times everything. So I think that the box really highlights the fact that you have to do six specific multiplication problems, whereas I think with distributing, sometimes people forget. So again, am I ever going to make you use the box? No, but I do think it's a good tool. So I'm probably going to give you guys some blank boxes to use on your test just so that you have them. Okay, you don't have to use them, but I do think it's a good tool to have. Just like when we did systems of equations and you could solve it by graphing or elimination or by substitution, and sometimes it was way easier to graph and sometimes it was way easier to eliminate. This is kind of like that. Sometimes it's really easy not to use the box, like in number one, but sometimes like in number 13, you might want to use the box. So it's good to have all the tools at your disposal, even if you don't use them. All right, so what does this mean? No. Man. Huh. No. Yes. Okay. So what people always want to do here is just say distribute this, but you can't do that because that's not really what this means. If there were a big two outside of here, you could do that. If this were a monomial, you could do that, but this is a binomial. So what does it mean to square something? To multiply it by itself. Like if we do nine squared, what do you do? 81 because you do 9 times 9, right? So if you're doing x plus 5 squared, what that means is you're multiplying x plus 5 times what? x plus 5. So you can't just distribute the squared. You have to do the binomial times the binomial. What if it were to the third? Then what would you do? Put another one on there. If it were to the fourth, you'd have four of those. But either way, you cannot just distribute it because multiplying a binomial times a binomial is not as simple as just multiplying, squaring the first and squaring the second. So now that I have this, what do I do? Do you want to distribute or use the box? Box? Okay, so our box here is going to be a what? How many by how many? Two by two. And this will be x plus five. It doesn't matter where it goes. What would this box be? What would this box be? And this box? And this box? Where are my like terms? Which ends up giving me what? Good. So it ends up being x squared plus 10x plus 25. So when you square a binomial, it is so important to remember that you cannot distribute that. You can only distribute that if this is a monomial. If this were something like this, 5x squared y3 to the second, then you can distribute it. Then it's a shortcut to distribute it because this is a monomial, which means it doesn't have what signs? A monomial means that it's all held together by multiplication. There's no plus or minus signs. Good, Brennan. So there's no plus or minus signs, so you can distribute it. Down here, this is a binomial. You've got to write it out twice. All right, so you end up getting x squared plus 10x plus 25. 
Okay, so do this one. Try this one at your seats. X plus 4 squared. All right, what does this end up giving me? So we end up with x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16, which gave us x squared plus 8x plus 16. Okay. So then this right here, this perfect square trinomial, because it's a perfect square that results in a trinomial, will always give you what? What will the first term always be? X to the second, X to the second power. Okay, in this case, it's AA, so A to the second power. But then what will this middle one be? Um, the two second numbers added together. Okay, so this added together. And then what will this one be? Uh, the two multiplied. Good, exactly. So you add this to get the middle one and you multiply it to get the third one. It's always going to be in that pattern if it's squared. So that means that something like this, if I gave you x plus 3 squared, the shortcut you could do here is instead of having to write it all out and multiply it all out, you know that your, middle, your first term will be what? What will your middle term be? 6x. Six. Six so plus 6x. And what will your last term be? Nine. Plus 9. So you add to get the middle one, multiply to get the last one. It works like FOIL, you mean? Yes, because if you wrote it all out, that's what you would do. This is essentially just saving you the combining like terms step. So it's not like, it's not really that much of a shortcut. And it only works when it's a plus, but it works every time. So just like be aware that it will be a pattern every time. Yeah. Multiply, add 3 plus 3, and then multiply 3 plus 3. But yeah, if you want to think about it like that, that's fine. All right. Okay. Do you think there's a pattern when you're subtracting? What do you think? So let's take a look at an example. Let's do like x minus 3 squared. What would that look like? That would be what? x minus 3 times x minus 3. All right, I'm not going to box. I'm going to distribute. So first I'm doing x times x, which is what? x to the second. And then x times negative 3, which is what? Negative 3x. And then negative 3 times x, which is? And then negative 3 times negative 3, which is? Positive 9. Very good. So then what does this give me when I combine these? All right, so negative 6x plus 9. So is there a pattern there, do you think? What's the pattern here? Uh -huh. Good. So this one is still the same. And then what do you do to get this? Same thing. You add it twice, but the sign is now, in this case, negative. So if it's a minus, just like that one, if it were x minus 6 squared, what do you think your answer would be without doing all this? What do you think your answer would be? Well, first, what are you going to have first? x squared minus 12x plus 36. Perfect. Minus 12x plus 36. Because you add this twice, negative 6 plus negative 6 is negative 12. 36 is negative 6 times negative 6. If you're looking at this like, I have no idea what these patterns are. I don't know where they're coming from. Don't worry about it because you can always just do it the exact same way. The really important thing to remember is that this means this thing, this binomial, shows up twice. Okay? So if you're a box person, be a box person through and through. All right? You're never going to have so little time to do something that you can't do a box for everything. All right? Again, I still use boxes when they're really long. I do most of the binomials in my head, but if they're long, I do a box because I don't want to make a mistake just because I've got a negative sign or I forget about it. All right. So what do you think this one would be then? 
same kind of thing. What's your first term going to be? A to the second, and then what would your coefficient be, do you think? 12. Not 12. Six. No. 36. 36, why? Yeah, 36 is 6a squared. So let's take a look at this. What's my binomial that I'm doing twice? So what's 6a times 6a? 36a squared. What's negative, or 6a times negative 1? Negative 6a. What's negative 1 times 6a? And then last but not least, what's negative 1 times negative 1? All right, so then what happens with these? Okay, so same pattern. It's just in this case, we had a coefficient here. So 6a squared. Then you've got two of these, and then one of those at the end becomes a positive. All right, go try these four at your boards. There are a lot of patterns in these, but you can always fall back on doing the box method and just repeating it. The most important thing is to remember that these mean that they're double binomials, so there's two binomials. Now, the one special pattern that we're gonna actually spend a lot more time talking about because we're gonna use it a lot when we do factoring next unit is called the difference of two squares. So let's take a look at what happens here in x plus four, x minus four. So I'm gonna distribute this one and that's gonna give me what for that first part? x squared minus 4x. And then this is going to give me what? Plus 4x and then minus 16. So what happens when I combine like terms here? These go away, so all I have left is what? Good, x squared minus 16. So again, you should be writing this down. So when it is an x plus 4, x minus 4, what ends up happening is that the middle terms will always cancel out, and you end up with x squared minus 16. Okay, this is called the difference of two squares, and we're going to see these all the time when we start factoring, so just keep that in mind. So then when I'm looking at this, these are all these types of examples. So that means when I do letter A, I can do all the work, but I know that x times x gives me what? x squared. What's going to happen with these middle terms? They're going to cancel out. How do you recognize that? Plus 6x and negative 6x. So how can you tell just looking at that that that's going to happen? They're different signs, but the same number. So the middle ones cancel out. So really then I know it's just going to be x squared minus what? 36. Good. Does this fall into that pattern? Yes, because it's the same exact problem, but with a different sign. So that means I'm only going to have two terms. So I can just do what's x squared times x squared? 4, good. And then my last is going to give me what? Minus 4 y squared. Perfect. Because I know that when I do this, that one and this one are going to do what? Cancel out. Okay? All right, so then the last one down here, does this work with that pattern also? All right, so what would that give me? 49. So plus 7n, minus 7n, so those go away. And then minus n squared. What do you notice about the signs in the middle? It's always negative. And that's because when you multiply a positive times a negative, it always gives you a negative. Okay, so it's always going to be a negative. 
All right, you guys have 15 minutes and only three problems on your exit ticket, so you should have plenty of time to do it. I wanna just remind you guys, exit ticket should be independent because it's your time to show me that you know how to do this. So you're doing these three when you're finished, bring it up to show me, and then you're done for this class period.